Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we're discussing vigilantes. Vigilantism. Yeah, yeah. It's an (laughs) interesting topic. Yes, but before we get started, what am I about to open? We are drinking Lodi Cabernet Sauvignon 2015. From the Hook and Crook. From the Hook and Crook Winery in Lodi, California. And do we know the ABV on this? I don't think we I didn't we even look, look, look for 13.5. That. Uh, just enough. Just yeah, enough. Just yeah, enough. Yeah, just enough. Not, it's, a, it's on the higher end, but it's not super high for a wine. Yeah, it, it, it ought to be good. Ought to be, yeah. It looks good. Uh, and and this, this wasn't chilled. No, uh, it, it's not. Doesn't, it re- is doesn't require, room yeah. temperature. Good, good. Well, while she's opening that, I kind of want to k- kind of get going here with this idea of vigilantism. Um, you know, we've, we've done a few shows on... Uh, you know, we did a Batman episode, and we've done a Superman and some different things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and that kind of got me thinking about, um, you know, the idea of, of vigilantism and is there ever a room for it? And, and, I, and I know we always associate, you know, vigilantes with super, Batman, but I want to expand that. I want to talk about vigilance, uh, vi- you know, uh, uh, vigilance committees, lynch mobs, uh, uh, mob rule, different organizations that, that, that do this as well. I, I do love, and, and I'm not saying that you're incorrectly using English, um, but I do love that you talk about it uh, in, in the verb form and say vigilance, because that word yep. is its own word that has different meanings. Uh, well, you know. but, but that, that's, that they're from the same root. So. Yeah, I, I yeah. agree. I agree. Yeah. It's uh, just, it's funny to me to, yeah, to yeah. hear it in that context. Well, uh, the, the, you know, when you watch the old John Wayne movies, the first thing the sheriff does is gets the posse together to go out and get something. Mm-hmm. Well, a posse is a vigilance committee. I mean, that's, that's essentially right. what it is. Yes. Uh, but, 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 you know, re- initially, if, if you take that word back, uh, vigilante back to its, it, its Latin words, you, you, you can see it in Spanish uh, where it, Kind of means person who watches or watchman. Uh, that comes out of Latin. So this, I mean, it's, it, it's got a it, it's got a long standing tradition there. So just 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 kind of to get us going here, what do you, what do you think of when you think of of vigilante? Um, I think of somebody who takes the law into their own hands. But I also think of it with a positive connotation somebody who does it but is ultimately working for the force of good whatever okay. that is you know they're doing it altruistically too they're okay. they're not getting compensated for their actions i i, I think that's a that's a um, an idea that we have that's yeah, kind of ingrained absolutely. in us uh, okay uh, yeah because i don't we don't consider police vigilantes we don't because they're sanctioned yeah, they're uh, sanctioned and they're compensated. And I don't know that we... I'm, I'm going to talk about sanctioned vigilantism a little bit too. Okay. I, don't, I don't know that we consider bodyguards vigilantes. No, yeah. And again, yeah, well... I, I, think, I, I think you they're could. They're socially sanctioned. Uh, but they are, yeah, okay. But they're compensated. Nor... Uh, uh, it, they're doing men. it for profit. Okay. Hitmen. But there, there's another one that's completely unsanctioned. And But again... We don't really consider them vigilantes. Yeah, because they're not doing it for the public good. They're doing it for, for a paycheck. Profit. A profit. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. Okay. I, yeah. I, I, I can see that. Yeah. I, so what, what kind of got me into this is is I I was, you know, in YouTube hell like so many times. I I, I, I end up with. Um, I think you like it. Yeah, I was going to say, hell, is it really I think you like YouTube it. hell if you like it? Uh, well, <laughs> it, it kind of depends because you. Is that your kink, Mike? You, it's one of them, you know. You, you you get into this stuff and 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 you, you you like some of this. And the next thing you know, you're just clicking and clicking, and then you get places that you don't <laughs> like. Okay, well, I came across this professor, uh, and I'm going to butcher her name, uh, Doctor Diana Hache, H S I E H. I don't really know how to pronounce it. I didn't see it pronounced. Um, okay. Who right. is like she she does a does a YouTube channel where she deals with like modern phil- philosophical questions. Cool. Uh, interviews and pe- answers questions of the audience. And mm-hmm. uh, she got asked this question about it. And she, she gave this definition in here when, t- when dealing with vigilantism. And tell me what you think about this. She says the problem with vigilantism is that the government's proper function is to ban the initiation of force and to exert proper retaliatory force against those who illegally use force. 
So w- w- what do you think about that definition? You want me to yeah, can we go over that, that again? One more time. The government's proper function is to ban the initiation of force and to exert proper retaliatory force against those who illegally use initiatory force. Proper retaliatory force. So, so it's almost it's almost as if one would have to commit a crime against somebody in order to be subject to the force of the government. It's almost as if you'd have to exert force on another individual. You couldn't do something generally where it's like you could have hurt somebody like like let's say you can't an OSHA talk. violation yeah. like that wouldn't yeah. be violating a, you know. a social norm. Yeah, exactly. Like that could not be a crime under this definition yeah, because her her definition specifically yeah. deals with force. Now, now again, this definition yeah. was given right. in context of of vigilantism, right? Um, and 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 the idea here that 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 she she comes up that in every case vigilantism is wrong, in every case because. Okay. Uh, the, the 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 initiator is working outside of outside mm-hmm. of sanction, and because they be- haven't been given government per- permission to initiate. Yeah, okay, force. but it's also she looks at it and says, "Look, it's it, it becomes unclear very quickly who is violating whose rights right. on which side, and it becomes very difficult to determine, even if the vigilante is on the right side, uh, who is making initiatory force and who's making retaliatory force." Right. Well, and that's for instance why. Whenever someone, whenever one person kills another person, even when uh, the public looking in thinks it's very clear that it was self-defense, why that person still goes up on charges a lot of times, not always. Oh, yeah. If, um, if, but still if goes you up defend on yourself, you're probably going to be charged with yeah, something. Yeah, you're going to be charged. And ideally... If it was truly self-defense, you will be let off because, you know, they were initiating force against you and you were just stopping it. And it happened to end- result in their injury or death or something like that. Does the government kind of looking in the same definition space, is the government required to fulfill its job? For instance, somebody kills your sister, whatever, you know. And it's pretty clear that it happened, and the government refuses to take action. Or, let's use a a hypothetical here that that actually has some legal basis for anyone who thinks I'm just, you know, uh, 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 shooting shit. Shooting off the mouth. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. The president murders somebody in broad daylight, and he has the controlling party, and they refuse to impeach him, and the courts decide he can't be charged he can only be yeah, impeached. Kind of a kind of a Filipino thing there. Exactly. Yeah. 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 So this happens. The government has refused to use its force to ban force. They are allowing the president to murder in ways in which he usually doesn't murder. But that's another show. Yeah. Um, uh, would that be our uh, <coughs> our show in the Philippines? Maybe. Well, no, I was more talking about drones and stuff like oh, that, but, oh, but I in, see in ways saying. in which he doesn't normally murder. But um, illegal but, murder instead of legal murder. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, well when it, the president it, does it; it's always legal. Exactly, but uh, that, that's what Nixon says. Uh, but but he does this, and then you see the government <laughs> said he's dead. Yeah, uh, you see the government, and the government, by your view and by the the popular view of the public, is not doing their duty. Is that a a is that something they've done wrong, or is it like their optional duty to ban? That, you know, that, that that's an interesting question because uh, that was actually given to the doctor, uh, Doctor Diana Hache or whatever. I, I, I'm sorry, Doctor H. Doctor H. Uh, they asked the same the th- same question. What if the government fails in its proper role? Right. Is that kind of what you're going to? Yes. Well, she comes up here and says uh, says that, that that in this case, in her opinion, as mm-hmm. a as, as a philosophy professor. That uh, that vigilantism still violates the rights of other individuals. So if you're acting, you're violating the rights of those that you're punishing. So she would say instead, like, you don't get to resort to vigilantism because the government's not doing its job because you're not solving the real problem there. You need to fix the fix your government. I think that's what she would. I think that's the step that she would take next. Not but take over the role of the government. Yeah. So. Uh, I think that's a very interesting question and one I was going to get to, but not actually the question I'm asking 
Now, so my question more uh, hinges on, has the government committed a moral wrong in failing to do their proper role? Um, or is it an optional thing? Like, is it not morally wrong for them not to do it? It's yeah. just what, you know. Okay. I, I think that's a show in and of itself. I, yeah, I, I, I think. I, and a killer just show. Just in a quick offshoot, I would say that, yes, what they did was morally wrong. Yeah. I would also say that it's legal. At least in our, in our system yeah. of government, it's legal. And, and, and the way I can prove that is you can look at the fact that uh, uh, if a police officer comes upon you and you're being attacked by somebody with a knife, that police officer is not required to jump in there. In fact, in most cases, he's not allowed to jump in there right. because he's endangering himself. I right. would argue further that every action is legal unless the government pursues it. Now, there's a gray space where you could say – the government may or may not choose to pursue an action. You know, you kill somebody and, you know, maybe you didn't get caught. But if it's a black and white, they're not going to pursue it. For instance, if the attorney generals of the, your state and your county and the national government all came to you and said, if you kill Bob, we won't pursue you. Or the legislature came forward and said, it is now legal for Jim to kill Bob. Like when it used to be legal to kill black people. Yeah, what, whatever the case is, then it well, is not so much that it was legal. It was that it was. Or sorry, yeah, it wasn't legal, but they didn't pursue it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at that point, so it has illegal. It has become legal. So anything the yeah. government does, yeah. you know, de would jour. be uh, de facto. De facto. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, de jour is a fancy mustard. That's Dijon. <laughs> Let's go on that that rabbit trail. De jour means under the law. De right, facto right. Okay, means yeah, yeah. under the fact. Uh, okay. Uh, so, in fact, instead of in yeah, law. Right. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. Um, all right, so I, I find that to be an interesting question because there there have been a lot of cases of of things like this. Let's let, let's talk a little bit about that uh, in cases where the government fails, cases where maybe it's okay to be a vigilante. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're in a system where um, where the state has 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 somehow become uh, corrupt or incompetent. Right. You're in a system where the state fails to protect individuals. Would it then be philosophically correct to enforce the, the enforce uh, the law yourself to become a vigilante? Yeah. Um, because there there are there are cases where people have done this. Uh, you know, throughout our own history, we've seen it. Yeah. The Sons of Liberty. Uh, you know. The, Tell me what you want to, but dumping those uh, that tea in the harbor at the Boston Tea Party was was an act of vigilante. The, there's yeah. a, 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 a I, I want to take the next scenario when we're done with this one, yeah. but, but but let's um, let's dispose of this one first. Okay, uh, but just just, just some uh, the Ku Klux Klan. Mm -hmm. uh, did, did, uh, sometimes the Black Panthers. Uh, we're going to talk about a group called the Lavender Panthers a little later on. Mm -hmm. These are there are all these different groups that have taken the law into their own hands because they believe the system that was there was corrupt. Well, there At was a drug dealer uh, several years ago who um, the government was not vaccinating kids, and um, and a lot of the there were a lot of sick kids, and they him and his gang of people took it upon themselves to provide vaccinations to those kids went outside of this was a role that was perceived to be of the government the state role yeah um the government wasn't fulfilling that job and it was perceived largely by people as a heroic thing that happened so if there is force being inflicted on innocent people and the government isn't fulfilling that role then how are those different in that one is morally right and one isn't yeah so i mean as to to, to moral righthood as a moral relativist relativist and i, I know that burns some people's ears out there uh, i think you really yeah, have to uh ask from which viewpoint we're asking if you're asking from a societal viewpoint it becomes a very democratic question mm -hmm. did society support it <laughs> right. it becomes a, a social justice question i yeah. guess we'll call yeah. it yeah. uh if you're it's asking why batman was a hero and not a villain yeah if you're asking is it is it right for you from an internal perspective how well do you sleep at night after you did it and then you know we could also ask for about the victims was it right for them I, i've even seen cases uh the rarity but where somebody's a victim of uh, a thing and they say i get it like i get why he did it. i don't like it 
but I understand. And you know, so so you could even see where it was right from the victim's perspective. Yeah, speaking of from the victim's perspective, I want to I want to bring up one example that I that I discovered called the Galabi Gang. Uh, the Galabi Gang is a, a a group of women in India. Uh, India has some of the the worst track record uh, in, in, in the world of uh, of women's rights mm-hmm. of cases of. Uh, uh, selling children into into marriages mm-hmm. they don't want to, dowry situations, abuse of women being forgiven. Uh, in in some cases, the idea of study where women are expected to throw their themselves on a funeral pyre when their mm-hmm. husband dies. Well, this group of women uh, starts off with, with with just a couple of women. Uh, uh, and they call themselves Galabi, which is uh, uh, means red because they uh, that they would go after people that had committed crimes against women with these red broomsticks and just. Mm-hmm beat the shit out of them until they, uh, uh, you know, to bring fear into, the, yeah. into them. This, this, this group now, according to Al Jazeera, okay, has over 400,000 members in, in it now. And they are a force of vengeance for women in, in India and, and into Pakistan. And, and, and which member is it? The, the 400,000 and first member that differentiates them from a government? Which member is it that then they become legitimate? Well, at, at this point, they're still they're they're still considered to be criminals, right? right. But and, and and the government, you know, ha, has tried to catch them, yeah. but over and over again, they have all these members, but nobody ever sees anything when it happens anymore. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, so, if you if you believe that to be a government is to have a monopoly on force, yep. meaning you get to determine when, where, and to whom force is applied, and by whom. Um, Sounds like they're a better government than the government. Yeah, I mean, they have formed a government within a government, um, and, and, you know, it sounds like the society in which they are operating has accepted them. A secret state. Yeah. Yeah. So let me, if, if you don't mind, if, yeah. if we're ready. So here's, here's the next scenario I want to talk about. Since we're talking about vigilantism in the context of government and law makes right. Okay. Let's talk about a situation where there are competing governments in, a, in, a, in an area. And okay. one specifically I want to talk about right now is Venezuela. Yeah. Because you have uh, Maduro with, with claiming a government. Did I tell you he was going to try to talk about Venezuela? Or he That's was awesome. going to bring it in? Yeah, awesome. like yeah. not a problem. Yeah. But you have Maduro and, he, and he, he's the old government. Yeah. And then what's the, the, the oh. name of the younger gentleman who I've is the Liberation Party? I can't draw anyway, his name now either. Yeah. Um, Look it up for yeah. us. Yeah, while, while she's looking that up. But he is claiming legitimacy and yep. there's co- some countries recognize one, some countries recognize the other. But they have contradicting laws on... Uh, one's allowing the militia to get involved and these people kill these people and and different sides are saying different things are legal. So in that case, who's a vigilante and who is a law-abiding citizen? That's easy. Whoever wins is going to be the law-abiding citizens and whoever loses is going to be the vigilantes that are hung. So that... Yeah, that, the same way you decide patriots, patriots and terrorists. Yeah. But that's a really interesting answer because what that answer implies is that an act can sit in a moral superposition waiting for a later time when sure. another action happens that then goes back and retroactively justifies or unju- makes it right or wrong. I, I would argue, uh, and, and I hate to say this because it puts me in a position that I've argued against before, that every moral decision is morally relative uh, and, it, and it changes over time. You know, it was morally acceptable to be a racist for a long, long time. Right. It's not anymore. Okay, uh, I'm probably going to chop up the last name, but luckily I know the first name. <laughs> Juan Guaido? Guaido? I thought it was Guaido. Guaido, Guaido maybe. Guaido. I've read Guaido. it more than I've seen it. Yeah, Juan Guaido. Yeah. So, so yeah, you, more you, than I've heard you it. have uh, uh, Maduro and, and, and Juan. Yeah, <laughs> and Juan. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. we're buddies, it's apparently. A, it's an interesting idea. Um, uh you know, about what that line is between the two. Um, while, while we're here in the state, I tell you what, before I go to the next section, you want to talk about this, uh, this, this, this drink? I do in just one second. Okay. But first, I want to talk about something new on the set here. Yeah. 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 Um, I, I see some new art. It, Can, you want to tell us about it? Uh, we, have a, uh, we have a fan of the show, uh, 
uh, Bailey, who has, has painted this for us, and, uh, and she presented this to me the other day, and I wanted to thank her for it and make sure we had it up. I think it's absolutely awesome. It is. And it's, um, it, it's, it's the six-pack philosophy logo surrounded uh-huh. by uh, – Pride flags. Pride flags. Yeah, various yeah. pride flags. Uh, various pride flags. And I, I just think it's cool. If you, if you can give me a high-quality photo, because I don't know how well I'll be able to see that, but I'll, I'll put a, a photo on the screen oh, yeah, for sure. of it, and we can put it in the poster or and something. It, it says on there, uh, uh, anybody can be a philosopher. Yeah. Which, you know... Uh, I, I I I find interesting. I, I know I know John made a statement. It's kind of a backwards insult to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's a little bit of back uh, in a cough, man. But, but, but I appreciate it. But I, I appreciate. But you know what? I, I think I think that really that is the premise of the show. The premise of the show is it, that it, it, it's philosophy for the everyman. It, it really was, but but you know it could kind of it, it could be it, it could be could, uh, it could be read to be look at these guys. Anybody <laughs> can do anybody it. Can if, do if it. these guys did it, and I think she's right. But she's not wrong. You are not wrong, baby. But uh. This is an awesome piece of fan art. We're excited about it. If uh, you know, if anybody else has any fan art out there, please send it our way. It's so cool. It, we'll, put uh, it in a, we'll figure it out. I don't know how much wall we have. We, well, we've we already have decided we have to have two. We have to have two more before we can hang it up. Yeah. Because if we don't, it's going to say six, uh, six, six across the wall. Unless it doesn't nice. have the logo per se. So, uh, <laughs> you know, if if it, you would like to see six, six, six on a wall, <laughs> send us one more piece. But just one, apparently. We'll hang yeah. it upside down. It'll be 69 six. So, yeah. uh, and if we need more space, we'll take down the black this. hole. Oh, wow. hey. My, if you make Anna take down that, that picture, you've accomplished something because uh, yeah, she loves I do love that it. thing. I do. I do. I'll, um, I'll she took it. down my favorite picture and put that one up. Let me just <laughs> yeah, put yeah, it yeah, like yeah. that. Um, all right, so let's talk about this wine. What are we drinking yes. again, John? We are drinking uh, Lodi. Lodi. Lodi, sorry. Cabernet Sauvignon, uh, 2015. Mm-hmm. And that's the uh, Hooker Hook. Crook Winery. Hook, yep, Hooker Crook Cellars. Hooker Crook Cellars, Lodi, yeah. California. Um, and um, who wants to start this one? Uh, I can go ahead and start. Okay, I don't. I mean, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I really like this this cab. Um, let me tell you some good things and some bad things. First of all, uh, I think it is appropriately dry. Um, it is it's not. It's dry, but not bitter. Yeah. It, it is not overly sweet, um, and but it is not so dry. There are some wines that are so dry they almost make you want to pucker your mouth or get a drink of water after you take it. This this is not that 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 wine. It's very smooth. Uh it is not overly sweet, but there is a hint. And it, it, it it's a really nice uh, uh complimenting hint of it in there. Um all that said, I would I would also call it a uh, uh, plain. I, and I don't a lot of times I use that term negatively. I I don't necessarily mean it so much negatively in this case because while I think it's plain, I think it's good. I think it's 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 simple and done right. Um, one place where I really uh, will knock it is uh, the it's very alcohol forward. Uh, the alcohol is is, is apparent in it, um, and I think that could be smoothed out a little bit. I don't know if it you know what would need to be done, but the good news about it is it's going to be very good for aging. So all that said, uh, I'm going to give it a 3-0. 3-0? Yeah. Okay. Um, you or me, Madam Mistress? I'll let you go. All right. Um, I, I, I can't complain about anything you said there. I think that that, that it, it, it's all there. I think it's got a... Uh, the alcohol is a little heavy on the front side, mm-hmm. although I don't think it's... I don't think it... it I don't think it takes away from the flavor. Uh, it, it doesn't bother me. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I'm not tasting a lot of sugars in it, which I like, right. and I don't see a lot on the fingers there, uh, right. uh, real bad. So it's you know I I think there's a lot to this to to like. Um, I think three may be a little high, uh, just because I if I'm gonna drink a wine, I'm gonna drink a cab, and I'm drinking drinking a lot of cabs, and mm. I think uh, I don't think this makes the level of three. I do think it makes a benchmark, so I'm gonna say two five. Okay, interesting. Um, so. I'll just throw this out there to begin with. I'm coming in at a 3.1. And that's because it manages to both be smooth and dry um, without being so dry that it is uncomfortable. Um, When you take in air while you're sipping it, it's got some fun, uh, rich, but not overly heavy notes to it kind of a 
a floral, but almost a kind of a woody floral taste to it. Um, cherry blossom and cherry wood sort of thing. I'm tasting, I'm tasting oak in there. Okay. Um, um, but really yummy. Uh, it is, it is a little alcohol forward. Um, I'm feeling it already and I haven't had very much, uh, but I am also on some medication that is probably helping with that, honestly. Heroin? No, not oh, heroin. Sorry, I didn't, I didn't know. I don't That's for after I turn 70. Okay. Um, I've already got that planned out. <laughs> That's for Tuesdays. I so in 70. So in uh, 39, yeah, 39 years. Me too. If you know somebody who's dealing heroin at that time, let them hit me up. <laughs> I don't know if I can go to jail for that. I don't know. We'll see. When I turn 70, it's crocodile all the way. <laughs> wow. Oh, God. That'd be interesting. Oh, I don't Lord, think Lord, that Lord. would look much different than no, just, just a... No, it'd just be being right. 70. Anyway. So, 253130? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, play a game? Uh, yeah, sure. sure. Uh, so, nah, fuck Date Lawnmower. You're... Fuck. <laughs> uh, okay, she says fuck. Okay, she she, she picked... This it's, it's not a multiple choice test, sweetheart. You don't have to go with one of them. Um, so at a 13.95, 13.5, uh, it is in Cosby territory. Uh, but of course, you tend not to drink as much wine, as much volume of wine as you do beer when you're kind of out on the town. At least I don't. And that's been my experience with other people. Um, so not protect. Perhaps not quite as dangerous as our Cosby beers go, um, but I do think this is going to have a wide range of people that is going. It's going to please, and can do a really good job of sealing the deal, unless they like super sweet wines. In which case, this might not be unpalatable to them, but it's not going to be pleasant. Yeah, I'm going to put this in at, at number three, a third date wine. Uh, I don't think this this rises to the the uh, level of a first date wine. Um, I don't think it's bad enough to, to you know, make it a breakup wine. And I don't think it's interesting enough to make it like, you know, a mix it up wine or anything like that. But I think uh, at a comfortable place, I think if you were married, this would be a nice date night wine. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm putting it at a, at a third date. Okay. Uh, if I was doing that, I'd just say it's an any place wine. I think it fits anywhere. So, uh, you know, that, that, that's just me. Uh, we don't do fuck date lawnmower. We do fuck date study. Yes. Uh, Great and would this, steady. Would this be an evening studies wine? Yeah, yeah. I think it'd work yeah. well for that. Uh, and, and again, it's got just enough alcohol to to make the grading uh, uh, friendlier. Bearable. Friendlier. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to go with friendlier to the students. Yeah. Um, uh, you, you probably want me to start this about 30 minutes before I start grading papers uh, yeah. and, and, and be able to slide in there. Nice. And and you'd like me to stop grading papers about another 30 minutes in. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, you know, because there's no telling. Before what you be start going. getting saucy. Then I, get, yeah. then I start oh writing. God, the hell is wrong with you? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, fuck. You know what? He was an asshole last week. <laughs> His handwriting's all out of focus. He yeah. needs to fix that. <laughs> Can I have a quick aside yep. on the grading thing there? I saw a story the other day about this kid who was like, I'm, you know, I'm a really good student, get a lot of good grades, yada, yada. And uh, I was shocked the other day when I got my paper back from my teacher and it was an F. And I was like, I knew... I'm telling this story so much better than they did. I was like, I knew that was an A paper, and I got an F on it, and I don't know what I did. And there was a note that was like, come see me after class. And so this guy just like sweats through the whole class. Oh, my God, my parents are going to kill me. I'm going to be in so much trouble. This is going to kill my grade. And then like goes to see her after class and <laughs> said uh, she took his paper. She marked out the F, gave him an A. Said you were an asshole last week. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't say asshole. Should have said asshole. You were an asshole this week. I wanted to make you sweat. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, oh, that's that's, good, that's the sort of thing I would want to do. It's a good way to lose a job. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah, yeah that's Why? A, uh, that, that's what if you don't smart. say asshole? College professor, you can get away with a lot of stuff. Oh, okay. um, uh, the public school, you probably shouldn't. I guess that's like harassment. That, yeah, that's yeah, torture. Yeah, a little bit of hazing there. <laughs> Yeah, uh, ha hazing gets you in trouble. Um, so what I'm hearing is, if I'm going to teach, I have to go college level so I can fuck with yes, people. Yes, Collegiate yes, yes. Good. Collegiate's awesome. All right, so 
Back to our discussion, we've kind of been talking about, uh, you, know, you know, we've discussed what happens if the state fails to do their job. Right. Uh, I want to take that a step further. What happens if the state just fails to exist? Mm. Uh, it, it, I've heard that never happens. What, 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 what do you do with a, you know, is, is the government a vigilance committee at this point? And is that okay? If, if it ever got to the place where the state didn't exist, I... I think we'd have to fix it because that would be like total anarchy. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, if we look at places that have or have had defunct governments, governments that functionally don't exist, um, I think what we tend to see is that a vigilance committee will form and it will either do good things or bad things, well, but it exerts force on the people and becomes the new government. Who there, decides like, if the government exists? Well, there, there are examples of this. Uh, we can think about uh, manifest destiny in the Old West of, of, of the United States where people were moving into territories faster than the government was. Right. Vigilance committees uh, appeared. We can, we can look very recently. Think about when the Soviet Union collapsed. Uh, there were all kinds of vigilance committees that appeared and formed temporary governments until something else came in and replaced that. Yeah. Um, you know that governments get toppled. This uh, th th this happens from time to time. Uh, happens all the time in in some South American countries every six months. Mm -hmm. But uh, something has to fill that void. And I just I, I I wonder is it is it is it okay at that point? Is it is it philosophically? I mean, I'm not. I, I, I want to deal with it as, as a philosophical question. Is it okay for you to become the law at that point? So I think if we're using Doctor H's premise, the premise being that it is the role of government to uh, manage the initiation of force, yeah. then in the absence of government, it would at least be morally neutral, if not morally acceptable and possibly even um, a moral obligation. Okay. So I think that we need to draw the line very similar to where we draw government lines anyway, philosophically at least, not practically, and say it is not immoral for a vigilance committee to, to pop up and act as a monopoly on force to defend and settle disputes between those who seek out its protection. And in seeking out its protection, they implicitly agree to the rules of that, of that vigilance committee, but it crosses a moral line when they seek out conflict for those who aren't seeking their protection. Okay. Right. Well, let, 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 let me give you a, a real-world example here, and we'll talk about whether, whether what, what happened was morally acceptable. Not the collapse of government, but the collapse of law. Okay. Let's look at New Orleans after Hurricane Katrina. Oh, yeah. Where the police pulled out and they said, you're on your own. Yeah. And people were forced to, uh, you, know, you, you know, to patrol the streets themselves. Is that, an, what they were doing was illegal. The law is still in place, mm -hmm. but there's no enforcement authority. Is this is this morally uh, acceptable? See, so, uh, again, I would have to look at e at the instances, right? Because someone who's out patrolling the streets and um, shooting at people they don't like, or 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 using their their influence to to levy attacks of sorts, we'll call it, but to steal being robber barons, you yeah. know, yeah. Uh, yeah, I would I would say absolutely it's moral. Somebody who's out and they own three houses and they're patrolling those houses, uh, making sure no one's stealing from them. I'd say it's it's moral. So I mean, I I think yep. I think it's it, it's it's a statement so broad I can't make it to say everybody was or wasn't moral. Well, and to be fair, in the instance that you give of someone owns these three properties, they are they are patrolling the three properties that they own. That's not something that ever would have been illegal um, or immoral. It, it, it depends on the law of the state. And, and I suspect... And the city. Patrolling I, is fine. Depends on the city. You can't even own guns in Washington, D.C. I suspect in, in Louisiana it's fine just because I know they give us reciprocity, so their gun laws yeah. you know, are probably similar to ours. But all that said... I didn't say shooting people. All that said, as I was saying, it depends on the place. Yeah. Um, 
uh, there are places where but, you can. Castle laws don't apply everywhere. Castle laws don't apply everywhere. Open carry laws don't apply everywhere. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it, it just, it depends on the place. And again, I can no more make a, a blanket statement about the law of patrolling in that situation any more than I can make a blanket statement okay, about the morality. Uh, uh, again, we're not looking at the law philosophically. Mm -hmm. Do you think it's pure? Do you think it's okay to, to, to do this, to, 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 to take the place of the law? Uh, and I think in the absence of the law, absolutely it would be. I think it is no more immoral to take the place of, of, a, of the law where the law does not exist. Law or government, whichever we're yeah. going to talk about. It is no more immoral for you to do that than it was for the people who did it first to create that yeah. law or government for which has now been missing and you're Agreed. Agreed. void of. Agreed. Now, I'm going to take another step and, and another real incidence and give it to you. What about on the anniversary, the first year anniversary of the Michael Brown death? Mm hmm when the Oath Keepers showed up there uh, and, and, and started patrolling the streets of Ferguson using the open carry laws and openly carrying their rifles to patrol the, the, the streets because they were afraid of violence breaking out. Mm -hmm. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong. I'll tell you why. Uh, one, within the, the kind of narrow bubble we're working in of, of this you know, kind of philosophical view on vigilantism, one, it falls completely within the law. It does. So this isn't even really vigilantism. Uh, I, I, I think it's an initiating I, 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 force. Well, no, but they are they are there as a deterrent, at least as a peacekeeping force. Um, yeah, they are working within the law. Without they, yeah. they, they are working within the law, but I think they are working. I think they're skirting it really hard. Yeah. Uh, um, well, yeah. If if you break down force. It doesn't just include uh, physical altercations, but it includes intimidation, uh, threats of force. Um, and so I guess you could look at it and say they were there to intimidate people um, and thereby forcing yep. them to alter their well, behavior. Well, and in skirting the law, they are skirting... The, the, the right side of morality yeah. until they cross it. Well, <laughs> you know, here, here, here's my issue is uh, with the skirting. I have no problem with the people of Ferguson doing this. Look, we're worried about this. We're going to go out there. We're going to legally open carry uh, in order to defend ourselves. I have a real problem with an organization bringing people from all over the country to a place to do this. Well, and I agree. I would have some questions about how exactly it was organized. If some Oath Keepers in Ferguson said, hey guys, we need some help. I don't see anything wrong with that. If it was the headquarters in D.C. who said, hey, we can get some publicity this way, y'all can fuck straight off. Yeah, well, and I hope they, the, that that it, it's, it's no more from that viewpoint but but again we're not talking about vigilantism but yeah it's 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 no more messed up from that viewpoint than it is russia uh influencing elections of other countries which we know they do okay yeah but if it's not something of illegal course, we don't ever do that no. Ever, <laughs> I can I can think of no instance where we've admitted to doing that. Um, so, uh, but yes, sure. no, never admitted. Mind. Admitted yes. is the key word. Um, uh. So, but 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 all that said, but if if there's nothing illegal about it, we're not talking about vigilantism. Okay. And yeah. I would have no issue if the you know I don't know the first and chapter of the 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 Black Panthers decided to open carry walk with the protesters because they were worried about the Oath Keepers. No issue with that yeah. that either. Again, we're all working within the law until somebody does that it. first asshole does some shit. And, and, we, and we can look at, I think a good example of this, again, dealing with assholes, um, is Virginia... Wolf? <laughs> no, it's state. It's a state called Virginia, oh. and there's a city in it, where they carry tiki torches. Oh, God, I know what you're talking about. The tiki torches were in Ferguson. No. The guys, no this was a different thing. The, it was a white, white supremacist that group. Was, that, that, was, was, that was in Ferguson. That was are the, you sure? That, yeah, that was... And maybe in other places, too. Uh, Charlottesville. 
Charlottesville. Yeah. Yeah. North Char- Carolina. North Carolina. Yeah, they did yeah. that. Okay. It, happened, it, happened, it happened in Ferguson, too. Okay, okay. but Char- yeah. Charlottesville, North Carolina. Yeah. Again, every th- none, nothing there was vigilantism until one of the assholes plowed a car through people. Now he's a vigilante, and yeah. he is wrong. And, uh, you know, even... Charlottesville, even, Virginia. Yeah. It was Virgi- Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlottesville, Virginia. Oh, Charlottesville, Virginia. Yeah. Anyway... Um, <laughs> But he, he, he plows a car through. Now, you know, vigilante becomes a weird term to use here because, as I said earlier, it's usually donated, de- it's usually used in a positive light, and most people didn't see this in a positive light, except for our president. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, until someone plowed a car through, through the crowd, it, it wasn't vigilantism. It was it was protest. It no, was, you know, no, until then it was a scene from the 1938 uh, MGM musical Frankenstein. Um, you know, with the <laughs> mob carrying the torches. Yeah, but it was a little different because this time the monsters carried the torches instead of <laughs> anyway. It, but it was similar. I see the similarities. All right, I'm going to give you a, give you a kind of just a, a, another real instance here, and you tell me what you think about it. Jack Ruby, Jack Ruby, who assassinated Lee Harvey Oswald after Oswald assassinated President Kennedy. Jack Ruby, by the way, pled innocent to that, claiming that he he suffered mental anguish by the assassination of Kennedy. Vigilanteception. Uh, he was, <laughs> by the way, he was found guilty. He was sent to prison, but he got a second trial uh, scheduled. Died in prison before he got to have it. Uh, he was going to have a second trial for uh, uh, for that. But uh, Jack Ruby is, is that a vigilante? Yeah. J- is Jack Ruby a good guy or a bad guy? You he, know, he he avenged the the murder of our president. I would have called him a good guy had he done it to stop something or had they gone to Oswald and said, ah, if they'd have gone, if, if Oswald, again, assuming the, the, the which sides are good and evil here, right? But if, if Oswald would have crossed Mexico and the government said, ah, you got us, Oswald, we can't, we can't, we can't do that and they won't extradite you, you got us. And then he went over there. I could I, I could see good guy. However, the difference is he was detained and no longer a threat at that point. So I really at that it's, point it's, it's vengeance. Yeah, not which vigilance. which yeah. which is a little different to me, you know? Yeah. Okay. Interesting. I had never thought of Jack Ruby at all in my life as an example of a you know, a, even a possible good guy. Yeah. But I got looking at this going, you know, well, I, I can see where some people would think he is. I think he would probably see himself as a vigilante. Um, or he was hitman for the mob. We don't know. But, uh, yeah, something was going on. Yeah, okay. Uh, is that are we going to look at citizens' arrests here? Yeah, yeah okay, we'll talk cool. about that in a minute. Cool. Uh, I, 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 well, might as well move on over there while we're here. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about what happens. What about a system where the state creates a mechanism where vigilantes can exercise the law? Right. Now, it it, it sounds strange, but think about it. Uh, Bounty hunters. Right. Bounty hunters. Have to get licensed and all that. But but they're still still operating outside of the law. They don't have to have search warrants. They don't Mm -hmm. have to. uh, How about uh, uh, citizens' arrests, situations like that? Where you're, where, where you're pulling, you know, you're, you're exercising your authority without sanction. Yeah, so, you're subduing so, somebody and giving the state the opportunity, or to make sure yeah. the state has the opportunity to decide who gets force exerted on them. So let me ask you this: We're we're gonna take a, a little bit of a, a time travel here, yeah. back to the West, but not the Wild West, just the the Mild West, we'll call it. Okay. Uh, when you had your sheriff set up, you had yeah. a local government, but it wasn't as you know robust, robust. Mm-hmm. yeah, as it is today. Um, but, uh, the sheriff needed some help. So he went through and he deputized two people to yeah. come with him. Right. Yeah. Were those deputies at that point vigilantes? No, because a deputy has to follow the rules of, of, of law enforcement. So bounty hunters don't. So with that said, the law has created this avenue and basically deputized everybody. Now, is it right, wrong, dumb, or whatever? I mean, but the uh, law, it's not even de facto. It is, it no, is. I, uh, I still think it, I still think it sure. is. I still think it's, it, it, I still think it counts as a vigilante because it is operating outside of the rules that everything else has to operate under. But under a set of legal rules. To an extent, yeah. sure rules. Yeah, some, some. 
but just the fact that that, that bounty hunter, you know, we we've got these restrictions out there that say that a police officer can't, uh, you know, you know, the, the, they have to have a warrant, and bounty hunters don't. They yeah. can. But the police have to have a warrant to search your property. Yeah. If a bounty hunter goes on your property, with they first of all they don't have the officer for search warrant, but yeah. if they go on your property to obtain evidence, they have now entered breaking and entering. They actually have a harder. No, what they're ha- usually what they're doing is they're 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 going in there with uh, the way way they get away with it is is that you have a you have a card you haven't paid for or something and they're trying to reclaim something. Uh, but they, they, they're, the restrictions are much less on them. Yeah, much, much but, less. But even even in the car situation, again, uh, at that point, uh, the bank comes in. Again, yeah. they're re- repoing a car. The bank comes in and says, we have paperwork that shows our ownership in the car. And we have this contract showing yeah. when we can execute that ownership. So at that point, it's not even, it's not searching for evidence. It is, there is the property that is not yours, we we're reclaiming it, yeah. which okay. the cops could do without a warrant of any kind. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. You know? I can see that. Uh, anyway, that's just ideas. Yeah. Uh, let's go crazy. Sanctioned hero. Batman. Right. Batman's a sanctioned hero. Uh, he, 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 he's, he's, he's illegal. He's mm-hmm. not doing something legal, but he is approved by the government. Right. Approved by the state. Now... I'm, I'm going way out there with Batman because I think it, I'm using the absurd. I think it's going to explain well, something. Let, let's use the real. I was going to get there, but yeah, go ahead. But uh, in in certain cases, especially in those in which, for some law or another, the U.S. government hasn't been able to enter a certain zone or another, yep. it is documented that we have hired um, uh, uh, groups to go in as military forces and and and, and mer- mercenaries to yeah. do our job for us. So those, yeah. Are for sure sanctioned. That's the direction I was going to go yeah. next. Yeah. You know, if we could take start start with one, but 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 don't, yeah yeah. When you start doing this, uh, and and it's not just the U.S. that does this. Yeah. Uh, you've got cases like in El Salvador. There's an organization called Sombra Negra. Uh, it, may, it means the Black Shadow, and it's a it's an unsanctioned police force. Mm-hmm. It's it, because the law has gotten so out of control. The, the state's gotten so hard to control that this group has come there to enforce the law, and they do it by m- murder. But it's composed almost exclusively of, of police officers and military officers. Right. At that point, is that a vigilante organization? Yes. Because, um, you know, they're, they're, they're... Just because they're, they're officers doesn't mean they're not operating outside the law. They're, they're enforcing the law outside the law, which is a weird place. Right. Yeah, so I mean, if the, to me, if they're acting outside the written law, they are vigilantes. However, I said earlier, and I'll stick by, um, they they are acting within a de facto law because the government refuses to prosecute them. I'm sure, um, but but I, I think they meet the the textual definition yeah. of a vigilante, at least as far as we've explored philosophically. But uh, you know, you you have this weird situation where. The only way to combat these types of vigilantes is through vigilantes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which is, it, you know, it, and we've seen it happen. We, on our uh, Philippine episode, we saw mm-hmm. where they were using a lot of off-duty police officers as a vigilante organization. Mm-hmm. Well, that seems to be happening in a lot of these these uh, developing nations. Yeah. Um, these turbulent places. I want to I want to make a shift here to something that I think that you might find interesting, John. Uh, digilantism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, are you talking about doxing people? Uh, well, yeah, some, sometimes, I mean, could be, sometimes, sometimes, digilantism is using the internet as a way to uh, 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 punish somebody for their crimes. Yeah, uh, sometimes it's digging up old tweets. Sometimes, uh, okay. the, the lion hunter, the guy that killed the lion mm. in uh, in Africa, and uh, the the yeah. the people that went after yeah, him and Slotsky's right. I don't know. No, he was a dentist. He was a dentist. Okay, and they I think both of those happened, but anyway. okay. they ended up destroying this man uh, yeah. Uh, digitally. Yeah, he had to move. He was harassed. Uh, the whole thing. People that have been accused of of rape but not convicted. Mm-hmm. Uh, you had cases where 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 this is uh, you know that they, they they bring the accusations up even if they've been found innocent mm-hmm. uh, because they believe that that the law failed somehow. So their job is to uh, to punish you for for you know. A, a perceived slight of the government. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, my favorite one was this guy, Bradley Willman. This was, uh, this was several years ago. But Bradley Willman was apparently a uh, um, – he was sexually abused when he was young. Mm-hmm. And he took it upon himself to try and, and identify child predators. And he created a program – uh, where he posted a picture up on a, a site. And when that picture was downloaded, it gave him access to the people's computers. Mm-hmm. And he, he would then take the, this information, look through the computers, and if there was any, any files there, identify them, send it to the police. This was done over several years until he uh, finally reads, he finally ended up hitting up a, a, a person that had this person had over fifteen hundred indecent images on their on his on, on their computer, but it turned out that he was an Orange County judge, and uh, Bradley Willman ended up getting uh, get, getting convicted of uh, of hacker related crimes because he was illegally breaking into somebody's computer. This is uh, this is a growing thing that's happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, digilantism. What do you think about that? So. Uh, as far as the and that the, judge didn't get shit, did he? No, he didn't because of it, he didn't. because the evidence couldn't be used. So, uh, as far as the vigilante definition that we've been discussing, I don't actually think this can apply for a couple reasons. One, it doesn't directly involve force. Uh, now we can we can argue about property and theft, but that's that's a slightly. I don't think di- it involves physical force, but I think intimidation is a force too. Yeah. Secondly. I don't think any one uh, organization that currently exists, except maybe the UN, could write governing laws for this because it is a worldwide interconnected system, um, which which introduces its own problems as our society has been dealing with now. Yeah. 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 Um, but so within that, but then if you want to ask me the moral question. I'm going to kind of fall back on moral relativism and say that's that really depends on how you're asking. But if you're asking the broad societal question, I think we can all sit here and say hooray for him yeah. for, for catching those guys. Um, I'm, now, I think I think Nambla would be quite perturbed by his yeah. actions. Well, they can I, also fuck straight off. I'm, yeah, in, can, I'm in a weird place you know? because while I'm glad this guy yeah. found these people... Which is the, often the case with vigilantes. The fact is, what he was doing, he was illegally stealing information from people. Yeah, and and I I I I I, I think you know I think you own that information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, you know it, it. It it becomes a very interesting thing with the internet. Now he is doing it through people's ignorance. Yeah. Through deception of their ignorance, but. In this case, and in I'm going to say 99% of of hacker violations, it is such the case that the they've almost invited them in. Yeah, the 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 offense acts much like the intrusion of a vampire, yeah. in which you have to invite them into your home before they can do that, and that kind of introduces a. a, a yeah, well, a, you let me in. A defense yeah. to it, you know? Yeah. Does it suddenly become uh, morally right? If we're going to say that it's morally wrong what he did, um, does it suddenly become morally right if on the website where he put the picture, um, he also puts terms of service? And somewhere in those terms of service, it says that if you download the picture, this specific yeah. picture, that you're... Granting me unfettered access to I, your I think hard that makes drive. A big di- so, I think that makes a big difference. I think it makes a legal difference. I, I think it makes a difference. Period. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's legal, and 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 I, even if it doesn't make a a, a difference that's going to have a big effect, I mm-hmm. think it's an important enough difference that I, that I would accept it. So yeah, you mean, think it's sorry? Go ahead. I mean, notoriously, people do not read terms of, of course service they don't. ever. Um, but putting some your chance is we had um, a sorry uh, you may want to go back just a second we had a slight skip in audio whoops uh so uh, it makes a difference uh realistically uh-huh. but maybe uh, I, I i i mean the, the fact that they they put so you that, had this in the terms of service they've yeah. had the opportunity to read them and at that point it's their fault which is the same way a lot of corporations operate 
is sure, it sure. was in our terms of service. You had yeah. the chance to read them. So yeah. I guess we're going to hold everybody to the same standard. So that what that means, because this is another real world example, um, is these uh, people who uh, set up free Wi-Fi points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And put in terms of service. You can get free Wi-Fi if you screw to this. And they put in there, we are going to monitor all your data and track your identity and pull all kinds of information if you click agree and set those up as phishing points yeah. to try and steal people's credit information. Yeah. They're morally right. Well, I don't know if it's morally right, but I think that the, the fact that they tell you about it uh, changes things. I, I <laughs> Yeah, I, I I just wonder about it. Um, there's got to be a line somewhere. Yeah. I don't know where the line is. Yeah. All right, uh, last thing, because I don't want this to be be super, super long, mm -hmm. and this is kind of weird. I want to talk about real-life superheroes because I got into uh, oh, okay. yeah, yeah, YouTube yeah, yeah. help. Did you know that there are these people that are running around dressed in tights being real-life superheroes? Why are right they now? wearing tights? Uh, because that's what superheroes wear. We had this discussion outside, off the yeah, air earlier, earlier yeah. that, that what, what, what people don't realize is that whenever we're 10-year-old boys and we, put, we tie a, a, a towel around our neck to, to play Superman, that's not fantasy. That's a career opportunity for us at that point, okay? And some at people never, that point. And some people never outgrow that. Um, there's, to talk about a couple of these... Uh, Seattle had this group called the Rain City Superheroes. Uh, they've since become defunct in the last couple of years, but they were around for about eight years. Uh, wow, that's they a were long led time. by a guy named Phoenix Jones who uh, wore this awesome looking purple suit. Uh, and, and Phoenix oh Phoenix Jones was kind of their sport, their spokesperson, and he was apparently this martial arts expert and all this. Uh, no, uh, that's not how I picture him. I was, picture him as the Riddler. Uh, he's very much. Uh, if you've if you've seen the the movie Kick Ass, he's very much that kind of a superhero, uh, with with no no real powers. Uh, Damn, but now I have to see that. He, uh, he they asked him why he he wore this suit, and he and he told them it it's because his reasoning was it startles the criminals <laughs> and it allows the police to recognize that I'm a hero, so they won't shoot me in the. Uh, it, 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 That's why you act. wear your underwear on the outside. <laughs> but uh. <laughs> Who else uh, would do that? Uh, I'll tell you what. Phoenix Jones would patrol the streets of, of, of Seattle along with his uh, his other superheroes. This is what happens and when you name your kid Phoenix. I don't know if that was his real name, but we're going to say it was. Phoenix would uh, would dealt mostly with drunks, and he you know his superheroing mostly included uh, preventing people that were drunk coming out of bars from getting in cars, call the police on them, and and block them till they got there, uh, stuff like that. But he. Uh, he he gave up the superhero bit after he went to jail. Uh, he was convicted convicted of assault for uh, using pepper spray on a drunk trying to get in his car. That'll do um, it. So, uh, but 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 these guys are around. The one that I want that I want to talk about the most though. Uh, this is my favorite one. There are so many of these, but if I think every city should have this guy. There's a guy in Perth, and he, he dresses in a again in a purple suit, and he's known as Will Clamp Man. And all he does is go around Perth with an angle grinder and grind off wheel clamps that the police put on people's cars for <laughs> parking illegally. What do you think about these guys? What do you think about these real life I, I mean, I, I think it's cute. I think it's funny. I think I think it's interesting. People may even be artistic. Uh, I don't think this is a distinct philosophical question from no, anything else we've no, been talking about. No, yeah. it was just interesting to yeah. me, and I wanted to at least show that, that, that you know, there are people out there that are doing this. Yeah. Uh, well, and those uh, are people. For whatever, they, mm. for whatever reason. If, Mentally ill. Well, they are taking advantage of the fact that not everyone is doing this for their own self-aggrandizement. And were everyone doing this, we would be living in anarchy. Because that's what they're doing, is well, they are, they have decided for themselves that the law doesn't apply to them. Um, and I'm, I'm a not very statist person, um, but I will say that I believe that societies have rules, whether those are encoded into law or not. And what they have done is they are violating some societal norms 
in order, I genuinely believe all these people are trying to do is become famous. Well, yeah, I, I, I got to tell you, I got to. They want to be celebrated on the TV like Batman and Superman. I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this, this out now and let you, let, 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 let you make our, make our ending for this because I think you're right. But in doing that, I also want to say that uh, when the show is over, I'm gonna be putting my on my underoos and a cape, and I'm going out and, and fighting crime. Now, I, I got to say something before we close out, Anna. If you wanted to glare at Mike intensely or maybe throw something uh, for cutting your show on uniqueness short for going on and on and on, I think it'll be appropriate right about this time. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, anyway, I'm 10 points if you figure out why I'm flustered right now. Um, excuse the fuck out of you. So anyway, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Uh, this has been Six Pack Philosophy on Vigilantism. Uh, if you enjoyed this show, you can support us by going to patreon.com slash sixpackphilosophy, getting some super cool swag from teespring.com slash stores slash sixpackphilosophy. Hit up our website for some super cool content. Uh, find us on social media. We'll answer you there as well. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We've enjoyed it, and we hope you have too. Cheers. Cheers. <clears throat> Cheers. Ding. No. No, John, <laughs> the bottoms. The bottoms. It's a terrible sound. Terrible. Yeah, we, we got to fix that. Oh, yeah. See, the oh. bottoms. Oh, there we go. Get the unicorns. There uh. we go. Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. 